All right, this is uh, module two, homework seven. So we have 15 questions to answer in this one, and this is multiplying polynomials. So when you're multiplying four times seven k, we basically just multiplying four times seven, and that's it. We do not a lot of a lot of times people think it's the square root property and they do this business. The only time you do the square root property on both terms like that is if you had a plus sign or a negative sign. When you have two term polynomial, this is only a binomial. Uh, two term is a binomial, right? Uh, so anyway, let's answer that. Pretty straightforward. All right. Now when you have cases like this, let's look at this one. You want to treat letters and treat uh, coefficients separately from each other. All right, so you have this, and you have this. So 7 times 3 is 21. And then when you multiply variables of, of the same value, of the same thing, remember you add the exponential power to that. So x actually the same as x, so then 4 plus 9 is 13. And then you have y to the third added to y to the first is y to the fourth. So you add the exponential power together. All right, and that's the answer to that. Now, when you have binomials, you know, when you're multiplying a binomial times a binomial, you have, you're using the distributive property. But in this case, it's the FOIL method when doing the shared property. This is distributing out the this. That's the first term that goes to the binomial. And then you have the outer terms of the binomial. And then you have the inner terms of the binomial. And then you have the last terms of the binomial. Okay? So that's FOIL. But it's a distributive property. That is fine. So W times W is W squared. And then W times 6 is that 6 W. And then 1 times w is 1w, or simply w. And then 1 times 6 is 96. And then we combine these two terms together, and we get w squared plus 7w plus 6. And that's all we have to do. So it's, it's 12. Now you have this. Same idea. All right, and I love it. That w is one. All right. So y squared. This is a very quick thing to do. When it, it these are, I'm going to keep them up here. Whenever these are um, of a singular power like this, no mean coefficient, then the answer is going to be y squared, and then it's going to be added together with y and then these two multiply them together that's the answer it's a, it's a quick trick but because what it is when i say you add these two together you're doing this part is what you're doing rather than running w twice uh, or in this case y we're just going to go ahead and add them together and then this is this okay so add them and then multiply it's a, it's a trick it's a good, and it works when, of course, the um, mean coefficient is 1, as well as the power is 1. So. Now, when multiplying such cases as this, I'm going to go over a rule with you guys. Uh, now, I want you to commit it to memory, because it's a pretty good rule. You're seeing other classes in the school as well, but it's, it's the expansion of this is using the perfect square uh, multiplication process. So, if it's perfect square, like this is a perfect square or not perfect square, but it's a binomial square, um, we're going to go ahead and take this rule and say, well, when a plus b, some var variable, right, some variable, some constant, whatever, whenever it's squared, we go ahead and say a squared, and then it's plus 2ab plus b squared. All right, that's the formula we're going to use for this. And so when it says this, uh, these questions right here, it says uh, square the x and square the 3. That is complete 
was completely wrong. We don't do that. Typed it into the calculator, which is completely wrong. Uh, this is a throwaway. Rewrite the expression as 2 times x plus 3. That is wrong. That's not what you mean. And then it says rewrite the expression as this, then use foil. All right. And then stick your fingers in the ear and go la 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 la. That's a real, that's the answer. I'm going to put that one as my answer. <laughs> All right. I mean, if you don't know that, that you throw that one out because there's something wrong. But I want to pick it because I like it. All right. Uh, now, but I am going to say that the answer is obviously this one. Let's rewrite the expression. All right. I don't want to use that way for this. So for this particular one, I'm going to use this formula. So I'm going to say for this, this is my a. I'm going to square it. So the answer is x squared. And by the way, you have to obviously do this for this particular question, but I'm going to show you this. Anyway, um, but then we go ahead and multiply them together. So 3x times 2 is 6x. And then I square that last term, which is b, uh, and then to 3. So it's going to be 9. And there's my answer for, uh, pulled out, if you would say. I'm, I'm done with just using this. This is a critical uh, equation you want to remember. Now, it says add or multiply and add like terms. Well, that's what we did up here, right? That's what they're asking us to do. So when we do this, we're just now having a leading coefficient. So, multiplying it out, I get 30 x squared plus 2 z squared. And then 15, so 5 times 3 is 15 z. And then I have 6 z. And then it's plus 2. So now I bring these. Adding my terms, I'm just adding those two together, so I'm going to get 30 z squared still. And I'm going to get plus 21 z plus 3. All right. Now that I taught you this, right, I'm going to teach you this one. Whenever it's a fraction. So you have 3y minus 2 squared. It now, it, it's the still a perfect it's a, it's a, uh, binomial square. We call it perfect square. We're going to go ahead and get this. This is the same exact formula up here, but one additional or one additional uh, change or whatever. It's different by this fraction. That's all it is. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to take this and square it. And that's going to be 9y squared. Multiply them together, so 3 times 2 is 6 squared. Or it's not squared, but um, times 2 is 12. Let's add a negative sign. And then always positive, 2 times 2 is 4. And here we have our answer. All right, so I'm giving you the answers pretty quick based off of just implementing this strategy. That next one is following this strategy. All right, and so we have 2w plus 5y squared equals, watch, I won't write anything down except for the answer, and that's because I'm following this right here. Just because you can do it all mentally. What is 2 times 2? I mean, I know that's really hard, right? So it's 2 squared, W squared. Multiplying it together, so 2 times 5 is 10. Double that value is going to be 20. It's going to be positive 20. And then it's WY. So that's two variables that are different. And then, of course, then I take that term squared, which is 25, with the Y squared. And there's my answer for that one. So it's a lot easier than going ahead and doing the spoiler process or the distributed process. Now, when we're multiplying with this, we have the distributed process. So this is 
So this unit value, I'm going to get 12, that's 3 times 4, and then the x is 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and multiply the 3 times the negative 2, get negative 6. x to the 5th. And then I'm going to go ahead and do 3 times 5, is 15. And then x to the 4th. And then I've got next step. All right. So much of this is just repetition. Just practice, practice, practice. So I'm just going ahead and showing you through consistency the process. Now some of this you're going to get upset with me because I go ahead and do it mentally because it's not that hard. So I do four times or x times four x is going to be four x squared. Then watch this. I'm going to do x times negative three is negative three x. And then I'm going to retain that in my mind. The negative 3 added to negative 8 is negative 11x. And then I have positive 6. So I can do all that mentally. You're probably upset with that, but you can possibly do it mentally as well if you just can hold on to numbers a little bit. So you have a 1 times a negative 3 is going to be negative 3 x, right? And then negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Well, you should be able to generate this middle term. I just combined it mentally with negative, um, you know, negative three from negative eight. So that's how I got that. All right, and likewise, doing the same thing for the next one. It's always good enough. Again, I taught you enough how to do it by hand. I'm trying to teach you now how to do it mentally. If you can. Um, if you can, then you go ahead and do the forming process. And please, though, whenever you have something like this right here, please don't do the fall method. Use the formulas, the special case formulas. I went over them for a reason. I want you to use them. It gets really helpful to use them and get comfortable with them so when you have to do factoring of it or undoing of it, you can see it. And you use special rules for that, too. So anyway, two or x times 2x is going to give us 2x squared. And then x times 3x is 3x. And then you have 4 times 2 is 8. And then we're going to have 11 again. 11x. And then we're going to have 4 times 3 is 12. All right. And then you have that. I hope that you can do a little bit about what I'm doing with the practice of you know, practice makes habit. And that is the purpose. So we always need to do Four times x, four times x is four x squared. Then we have four times five is negative twenty. Negative twenty plus seven is negative thirteen x. Minus 35. Now I go ahead and do this. It'd be 20 x to the third. Then it's um, 65 x squared. And then um, one thing I can't really do it too complicated. I can, but anyway, I'm doing 25. And that's 15 and 17, so it's 135. All right. So I have um, that, and I'm done. There's my answer. All right. So I'm just going to get one over here. Oh, good. Um, that's a great question. I always, um, why didn't I distribute this out first? It's because I like to keep the number small when I'm doing it mentally for this process. That would be a little bit more difficult for me to do 20x squared and then 35x, multiply it out uh, in my mind to do the binomial expansion or, or the foiling process. So I did this first for that reason. But you could have done 
that by the way. You could have uh, distributed the five X first. But the, the great thing about multiplication is three times seven times five. You could do three times five and then do it, multiply 15 times seven, or you could do three times seven and get 21 times five, which is easier to do, right? Or you could do seven times five and then times three. So it's whatever makes it easier in my mind doing the binomial expansion to do a distributive property with uh, smaller numbers is easier. So that's why I did it first. Okay? So that's the answer to that question. Now it says the area. So when we're talking about area, this is, oh, now this leads us into uh, the next special case. When you have a binomial multiplied against itself, except for it has that uh, opposite sign like this in the middle term, not this is an opposite like this, but just the middle sign is changed, it's the operation between them, then this follows to the end. All right, A plus B, some variable, a letter, or a number, or whatever, here, plus some other variable, you know, or number, multiplied against the same exact thing, except for there be separate signs, the answer is always going to be A squared minus B squared. So it's going to have subtraction involved there. So if that's the case, whenever I have this, Multiply. All I have to do is take the first term with an expression. I don't have to multiply or do this for uh, distributed property. I'm just taking a and squaring it, which is going to be four x squared. And then I'm taking and putting a minus sign because that's part of the uh, formula. And then I'm taking and taking b and squaring it, and that gives me nine. So that's my answer. I'm done. Right? Uh, I came up with this answer real quick. You don't have to write all this stuff out. All right, number 14. Now, number 14 is a little bit annoying because now it has a binomial times a final. And so it gets, this gets easier. But it's not like it's impossible. It's still foiling. So x times uh, 3x squared is 3x squared. And x times negative 5x is negative 5x squared. And then x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And then you have 9 times 3 is 27 x squared. And then we have 9 times 5 is negative 45 x. And then 9 times 4 is negative 36. Now we go ahead and combine this to this, and combine this to this. And then that's what we're going to combine. So I'm going to my double on the lines, I'm going to go ahead and add them together. So negative 5 added to negative, uh, even not negative, my double on the lines. I said negative 5, add it to 27, it's going to give you negative 22. X squared. And then negative 4, add it to negative 45, negative 49. X. And then I have my negative 36. And then there's my answer for that. All right. And we got the right answer, uh, except I have a plus on it. Let me see what's going on there. Up oh, yeah, right here. This is positive, this is negative. Sam, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, because it's negative 5 added to 27, obviously, it's positive. All right. Now, 15. This is the difference between two squares that follows this pattern right here that I went over already with you. So what we're going to do is do it mentally. Answer is 36 x squared minus 49. I'm done. Here's my answer. So if you know your, your special cases, 
the answers are produced rather quickly. All right, now with this right here for number 16, we're not going to do anything with the subtraction first. We're going to do the expansion. And the expansion is obviously then uh, following this pattern right here and following this pattern right here. So I'm going to follow that. So I'm doing x squared, and it's going to be minus 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and then put in parentheses x squared, and then negative 14x plus 49. See, yeah, I did, I followed this right here. I followed this right here for both of them. Now, I'm combining a like term. So this added to this. Well, these, this is the opposite, by the way. What I'm going to do here, switch this to plus sign, switch this to negative, positive, and I'm going to erase this to negative. negative. So now I go ahead and do this. We'll see that these will cancel each other. Add these two together, I'm going to get 12x. And add these two together, I'm going to get negative 49. 40. And then I start cancel for that one. All right. So my final answer is 12x minus 48. All right. And that's the last question of this. Homework assignment.